Test, test, one, two, one, two. How are you doing today, Stuart? Uh, doing well. Sounding good still. We'll get this uh, music You know what's going. great about this view? They can't see me from the waist down. I am not wearing any pants. They can see me from the waist down. It's unfair. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Photo Op Podcast, stands for Photo Opinion, where we give our opinion on all things photo and video. I'm Ben Lucas. And I'm Stuart Marlantis, and my opinions are always facts. Always. Always. Actually, I lied. We don't do opinions. Just facts. (laughs) Only facts. The Photo Facts Podcast. Photo Facts Podcast. Uh, Our opinions are always facts. Anyway, moving on, we kind of had a little bit of a break. Last week, we did photo news. This week, we are going to do listener question. We're not yes. not just one, not just two. We're going to do all of the listener questions that came in since our last uh, episode a few weeks ago, kind of before life got crazy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, we'll get right into it. Uh, the first question we have is from Nathan. He says, I'm getting tired of not going out to take pictures due to the rain. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can tell when this was sent in because we had a lot of rain in uh, early June and that was really frustrating. Uh, what bad weather would you suggest? <laughs> I've poked websites about bags and shells. But it is ran- currently about third week of July. Not so much rain right now. No, no. It's, it's nice out now. Um, Anyway, I've poked around websites about bags of shells, but ran into shortcomings for every result. Here's hoping that I'm just using the wrong term in my search engines. Again, from Nathan. Thank you okay. for your question, Nathan. Well, uh, if you if you want to uh, just Google it, I think camera cover. Yep. That should be it. Um, but I have two specific ones that you can buy just right here. I got them. So the first one is this. It is literally just this kind of like nylon whatever uh it's like a coat sleeve uh, like a sleeve and it just has two cinches um so this one is called storm jacket camera cover um they also are two good ones one's by peak design mm-hmm. and the other one is by it's by lens coat <laughs> i i had i had to look it up real quick because i forgot um so i got this one uh Oh, dear Lord. I bought this in 2010. Mm -hmm. So this is 12 years old, and it still looks relatively brand new. So boom, there you go. So this is uh, very, very cheap. You just cinch one end around the uh, lens, and then the other, you kind of just stick your hands in here and do it. Um, Very cheap, very awkward, and I would say it gives you like 80% protection. If you are looking for 100% protection, this option is a little bit more expensive. When I say a little bit, uh, rather than, honestly, I th- want to say I bought this for like 10 or $15, but they're probably like 60 now. <laughs> Thanks, inflation. Um, yeah, yeah. I, th- this I'm going to say anywhere between $20 to $50 for this guy. This other guy is definitely over $100. This one is the Manfrotto. Uh, I sh- I'm sure they have a new version of this, but the one I own is the E702. Um, and so this is a big camera cover where uh, you can put a telephoto lens in here and then the Velcro kind of cinches down. Um, it even has another Velcro pad to kind of help you get everything in there and cinch it. Um, and then the Velcro can kind of stick around your tr- uh your camera collar or your tripod plate. So this mm-hmm. can be mounted and it's still completely sealed. And then your hands go in the side. So you have full, cl- uh, it's got this clear plastic. So you have full clear view of all your camera controls, which, you know, it gets a little distorted in the raindrops and everything. And it's still not perfect, but it, you can at least see what you're doing. But then you cinch this down around each arm. Something like that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for our, for our uh, audio-only listeners, imagine the T-shape where the tops of the T, you can put your arms in, and the bottom of the T is where the lens would poke out. Like that. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Um, and then so, uh, do I have a camera nearby somewhere? Um, Not near but, enough. <laughs> yeah. So so that is how, how uh, you... That's what I would get. So this is fantastic for hail or rain or sand. Mm -hmm. Um, If you're not getting wet, but you're getting sand, this will keep most of it out. Um, So this is fabulous. I love it. Um, If I'm expecting um, adverse conditions of any kind, I make sure this gets attached to my bag somewhere. Um, 
But then I also have this shorter one for when I'm running a dual camera setup so I can put that on my telephoto and this on my short. Or um, this is also just great for, you know, just uh, if I'm traveling and I don't know what things might be like, I can just crumple this up really tiny and just it takes up no space and shove it in my bag. Cool. Um, I have two comments on this. Uh, one, uh, if you're shooting in adverse conditions a lot, um, I would certainly encourage you to either buy or when you are buying camera equipment, look for equipment that is weather sealed. That's not perfect. That's not a replacement for covers, but that does help a lot. I have shot with weather Absolutely. sealed cameras with yeah. no covers before many times and not had a problem. The other thing that I've seen for really heavy weather or if you're shooting like over a a river or something and you're worried like like let's say you're standing in a river and you're taking a picture of some trees or something um if you're worried you're going to drop your camera in uh there are these they're usually made for like surf photography where they're a lot cheaper than a full housing for your camera it's like a roll top thing uh where you've got some clear plastic uh it's flexible enough that you can move some of the controls and there's this little kind of flexible port for your lens but the whole camera uh, is contained in this roll top mechanism like a like a dry bag that you might have seen kayaking. Um, I've actually seen those used a lot for like really heavy weather because generally it's built that it could be briefly submerged. And so any, you know, normal mm, rain okay. is not going to get through that. Um, it's going to be even a little bit more expensive than that one, um, but not uh, probably a couple hundred dollars, I would say, but not nearly as much as like a full housing, which would be way too clunky. Yeah. So, so this one is great because I can I can throw my seventy to two hundred with my uh, tele extender and it still fits mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. fine. Um, versus that one, I imagine. Yeah, you're more constrained about what kind of lenses yeah, you can put. Yeah, you're constrained it, but, about. But if you're really worried, like you're gonna drop it in water, that mm -hmm. would be something to go with. Yeah. yeah. So it is, you know, a uh, right tool for the right job. Yeah. But uh, look up camera cover or camera storm cover, mm -hmm. uh, storm jacket, and all of these will pop right up for you. So Nathan, cool. thank you so much for the question. Next question. What do we got? Uh, what do we got? Um, anybody shoot a lot of photos and then don't look through them or edit them? Paul. Yes, all the time. Uh, yep, yep. Why? Why you gotta Constantly. attack me like this, Paul? Constantly. Why, Called why, out. Why? Why do you have to personally call me out? No. So, so here's the, here's the deal Caught when it comes to that. <laughs> when when I am doing a photo. And I have an external pressure. Um, I'll, I'll also just throw this out there of like, I have ADD of just like, not kind of the normal ADD, but just um, the executive dysfunction. And for me personally, um, I, I kind of rely on the external pressure of like stuff would never get done without some kind of external pressure. Sometimes yeah. I have to set up a fake kind of external pressure. Like right now, what you're not seeing is right off camera. This entire studio is a huge mess because I'm doing a ton they of construction. I can't see that, Ben. <laughs> and I have a client meeting and I'm going, <laughs> oh no, this has to get finished so that the client doesn't walk in and see my mess. That is an external pressure, but I did it to mm -hmm. myself. Anyway, mm -hmm. so if I have a paid client, their photos get done immediately. Mm -hmm. um, Stuart's wedding is in a couple of weeks and his photos are going to be done, you know, just a week or two after that. That is going to happen versus mm -hmm. the photos that I shot. Uh, I did a wedding in Boston. And uh, I took my wife, I stayed the week, um, and then we went and kind of saw the sites, went to some museums. Cool. Um, one of our favorite video games is Fallout. And one of the Fallout games is set in Boston. So Trina has this really cool uh, uh, comic book in st inspired style dress and then a Pip-Boy. So she brought nice. those and we did kind of a shoot along the Freedom Trail, hitting all of those things. And then I'm going to edit the, you know, apocalyptic Boston Fallout shoot. And I'm sweet, like, oh, yeah, that's going to be really sweet. And that happened. I'm coming up on a year now. <laughs> And I, I have offloaded them from my camera and backed them up on my server. Always I haven't do that. actually looked at them yet, though. So, uh, yeah, Paul, you're not alone. Um, I do plan on getting to that. I just haven't quite yet because I've been busy. And so, no, that's just a thing. Mm -hmm. uh, if I'm doing it for myself, it will take me forever to get to them. But if it's a paid client, it happens immediately. And then just life happens. And like, I have it on my list that I'm going to get to that. But is that a higher priority than finishing, you know, some of the house construction projects? No. Is that a higher priority than finishing paid client work? No. 
Yeah. Um, speaking of construction projects, uh, you guys saw this in the last episode if you're watching on YouTube, but right behind me, I have a bunch of beautiful art. Yeah. If you go back to previous episodes, you'll hear like, oh yeah, it's coming. It's coming. I swear it's coming. No, it's, here. it's here. It's done. And it looks gorgeous. I love it. But that was a project that I had to do. Um, so yeah. I don't look at anything after I shoot it because I hate everything that I do immediately after it's done. So, um, <laughs> yeah, that's 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 another reason. So We've no, talked about that many times. Uh, Paul, you're not alone. <laughs> I will get to editing that Boston shoot. I swear it'll happen one day eventually. But yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, not alone. Um, yeah, you will make excuses just like we do. And we're with you. And we wish we could help you get over those excuses, but they will be there. Yeah, we don't <laughs> always have answers for these questions, but uh, that's the unfortunate reality. <laughs> does, but does anyone do that? Yeah, yes, all the we time. do. Um, I I will say the tip though is uh, try and set up some kind of external pressure of mm -hmm. like of yeah. like if there's someone if you shoot something, um, put someone else on the hook for um, I don't know, just like I need to do this for that because sometimes like like are you ever sitting on the couch and you're like oh man i need a glass of water i'm too tired i'm not gonna do it <laughs> and then and then your significant other is like hey can you get me some water and you're like yes absolutely and then you will like you know you'll do that for someone else when you won't do it for yourself or you say you get me some water <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's just me, <laughs> but no. If try try and set it up where where uh, there's someone else yeah, that yeah, is sure. uh, that is kind of involved. Very um, wholesome. And like even if you're working with a T TFP model, um, now you have to give give stuff to that model, right? Yep, for sure. So yeah, um, so yeah, thanks, Paul. Uh, we appreciate it, even though we don't have a good answer for you. Other than that, that's the that's the yeah, best answer that I know of. Um, from Terry, is it worth paying thousands of dollars at professional educational institutions to learn photography? Mm. That answer is no. Uh, that answer <laughs> is no asterisk. <laughs> um, so I r raise your hand if uh, you have a degree in photography. Let I the record not. show I am raising my hand. I, I just realized that doesn't play in not audio my form. Hand. <laughs> um no so i actually went to the university of washington i have a four-year of bachelor's degree in um interdisciplinary visual arts with a specialty in design multimedia and photography mm -hmm. um so uh was it worth it well mine no so i think a lot of what those things um teach you it, or like there is a little bit that teaches you, but you could also learn that just like taking far cheaper online courses. But I think mm -hmm. a lot of what you get from those institutions is actually the kind of networking and connections mm -hmm. to once you graduate and you have a portfolio, you can get a job. Yeah. So there are very specific art school. So like I have a friend who went to the art Institute and um, they end with a portfolio review where they have actual people who need to hire of like, oh, this is a designer from a fashion label coming through to see who in the fashion design, you know, what they like and, you know, handing out business cards, collecting information of just like those artists are doing a senior project so that when they so that they can get hired. So there Certainly. are schools like that that like. May, like you can talk to him about whether it's worth it i don't know i i would say he'd probably say no too but um you, there's there's a lot more to school than the education um my favorite quote ever is the mark twain i never let schooling I interfere with my education yeah yeah that's great um i i would say you're probably going to find a lot of people that say it's not worth it but you're likely not going to find too many too many people that would say that they wouldn't do it the same way um there is something to be said for being in that environment where you can meet people you can network you can work on mm -hmm. cool projects um you know even beyond networking just for a job just meeting people in general meeting peers that are doing cool stuff that you can help them on or they can help you on your cool stuff um is a great experience so as from that angle i think that formal education can be good um but is it necessarily worth the money specifically for the photography education? Maybe not. You know what is worth it though? Getting a degree in literally anything else 
and then tacking photography onto it mm -hmm. because now you that have a out. niche. Yeah. So like Stuart has certifications in diving and now <laughs> you can tack photography onto it yeah. and not that many people are good at photo video no. and diving, right? No, so, even though that's incredibly niche. <laughs> so it's incredibly niche, but if someone needs it, you're, you're a go-to person for that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so so for me, of just like, um, I didn't really have anything niche like that since I studied photography. I wish I would have studied more business, honestly, mm -hmm. because it took me a long time to get off my feet. And I'm still like, I'm doing all right, but I'm still not doing as well as if I, you know, had gone to school, get a, got a business degree, and then picked up camera. So do you need any kind of education? Well, literally every you know, mom, stay at home, wife, per, a new person who just got a Canon rebel, uh, can say I'm a photographer now and be like, Hey, look, so, some of them are great, mm -hmm. but a lot of them are not. So you should learn, but how you learn, you don't necessarily need to go to like get a degree or go to school. Yeah. Learn and try to specialize through your education and that'll serve you well. Yeah. Sure. So workshops, classes, books, which leads us into the, the next question. Oh, it does? Yes. I didn't even, even look. What's the next question? Why do photographers get so critical of others' work when art is subjective from Frank? Um, this is another thing that you'll get in a formal education is lots of critiques and learning how to critique people. Literally, I, <laughs> I got a degree. I have a bachelor's in bullshit. That is... That, okay, okay. I, I cannot believe I'm about to say this on the air. This mm. is this is gonna be insane. Uh buckle your seatbelts. This one might need to have an adult rating next to it. Actually, on second thought, that story is a little too spicy for this QA. So mm. I am going to put that into its own episode. There's going to be a link down in the show notes. And uh let's let's cut to the end of that. Enjoy the rest of this QA. Uh, yeah, it's like, oh, it's like an endless ocean and I can just like get lost in the textures and the ambiance. So I'm like, oh my God, you guys realize I was just trying to screw with you, right? Um, so that is that is a little sneak peek into what you'll learn in art school and uh, why are photographers just so critical of others' work is because a lot of people do BS like that and it is stupid and I hate it. Um. Yeah, I don't. I don't have a good follow up to that. I feel like why are photographers? It, it is. So I think um, it is very. In some ways, it's very easy to be critical of another person's work. It's 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 easy to see the flaws in something. And like when I often when I shoot something, I know the flaws immediately, or even as I'm shooting it. And if I were to ask for critique on that thing, I would expect to get that critique you can uh, once you've built your eye so to speak your photographic or videographic eye um there's all sorts of stuff that could be better um it, it could always be cleaner it could always be better exposed like you can you can always go further and further and further into protection or into perfection excuse me um and i feel like a lot of photographers then criticize even though it's art because i think a lot of us are chasing perfection all the time and I would hope that a lot of these critiques are coming from a good place. Somebody that's trying to genuinely help the artist mm -hmm. do better and better and better. And so I think that's in a good in a good place where it comes from. In a bad place, maybe they're just jerks and they want to tear you down. You know? Who yeah, knows? there are some people that are just elitist jerks. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think I think if you're talking more of the, like the bullying online space, there's just a lot of people that are like, "Well, when I got into photography, it was hard, and now cameras have made it easy." Well, yeah. that's too bad. Like. Get with the times. And social media sucks and people are toxic. Don't worry about it. Yeah. So there's that Ignore. level to it. But one more point that I would like to add on. Um, why why are some, some photographers so critical? I think when it comes to art in general, there are kind of three main kind of boxes that art ticks for me. Mm -hmm. Either it needs to be aesthetically pleasing. Mm -hmm. It needs to uh, make me feel something. Or it needs to have a meaning. And if it doesn't tick any of those boxes, then I'm like, this sucks. It's not mm -hmm. art. Mm -hmm. If it if it doesn't genuinely look aesthetically pleasing, that's 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 completely subjective, right? Yeah. That that 
that is completely subjective. But the other thing is, does it have any meaning? Like, um, there's this one um, artist, uh, I do not remember because I was just wandering through a museum, but um, they were an indigenous artist and they bought an Everlast punching bag and they rhinestoned it in indigenous fabric patterns. All right. As and and kind of like the deeper meaning is just like the indigenous people have been punching bags for the and I'm just like this is one a very aesthetically pleasing. Mm-hmm. It is just the, kind of this beautiful rhinestone punching bag, but also like wow, just kind of like the meaning and the connection and what it makes you think and all of that mm-hmm. of just like that that it makes you you know it has a deeper meaning whether or not i respond to that is one thing yeah but um like there is an intent and then also of like does it make you think anything does it make you feel anything does it make you want to do anything so for some of these kind of more like art gallery things it could be like oh this makes me want to uh recycle more or get more involved in my local politics or make sure that some mm-hmm. issue is coming to the forefront of people's mind that's one thing um and a very very basic level i take photos of uh like leatherman knives i used to do a bunch of work for them i want you to see that and go that's sexy i want to buy that mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. at a very basic level so yeah, yeah and, and if you're talking about people critiquing online too harshly um consider that a lot of that context can be lost online in errant scrolling um mm-hmm. infinite scrolling uh you may you may have uh, to you, the photo that you've taken may have a tremendous amount of meaning. Um, and that me- meaning might be more apparent to you than anybody else. Or it might be meaning that somebody actually has to look at it, you know, bigger than a postage stamp for longer than two seconds to get that meaning. And so, you know, hopefully if somebody's actually critiquing your work seriously, they are attempting to do it well. But I think a lot of people just post negative comments and that's just how the internet is, unfortunately. Yeah. So. Don't worry I'm, about it too much. Yeah, I'm not sure what the uh, in, intent of your question is, but I'm sure we went way off the rails. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, Frank. All right, and uh, our last question for today comes from Milo. Do you use your photos as wallpapers? <laughs> no, because I hate my own work, like I've said many, <laughs> many, many, many times. Uh, yes, actually. Um, <laughs> Sometimes be- I do. Uh, so I actually am very, very bad about setting my own wallpaper. So my laptop pretty much only gets used except for when I'm sitting here doing this podcast, my laptop Mm -hmm. pretty much only gets used when I go and do my, um, cosplay photo booth called triple click photo. Mm -hmm. Um, that has all of its own social medias. It's just Facebook and YouTube and Instagram, I think, but triple click photo on all, all three of those. Um, so the background for my laptop is um, the the triple click photo Facebook banner. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it, because that way when I get to a site of like all my stuff is branded with tri- triple click photo, I'm triple click photo. Like that's that's the mm-hmm. thing, right? Um, but when it comes to when I'm doing um, like this podcasting area is also where I do my client meetings, right? Mm-hmm. The big screen TV, I hook up uh, my laptop to this and then the clients sit on the couch that's just off screen here and they look at all of their photos and have a slideshow. And No, this um, was exclusively built for the podcast. What are you talking about? Exclusively built for the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely no double dipping allowed. Um, but uh, I will set my background screen to one of the couple's photos. So the second they walk in the room, they go, oh, that's us and that's beautiful and I love it. So um, I am very, very utilitarian when it comes to my wallpapers. Um, back in the day, I used to do a bunch of, uh, you know, wallpapers that... Um, of like, ooh, I need to make a new wallpaper and st- do cool stuff. Yeah. But I find a lot of that stuff more distracting than it is pleasing. So, like, I like having art, but my wallpaper is pretty much utilitarian. It's either, like, a client image or it's a self-branded thing so that it looks and feels professional. But, like, if you're just at home, just, like, if you like something, make a wallpaper. Also, wallpapers my, can be changed at literally any time. My current so wallpaper is do what you want. a Monstera plant. Uh, that's like very contrasty with a black background on my phone because uh, it's kind of vaguely cool, but it gets out of my way. I should change it. Um, my computer wallpaper is, this sounds so lame, but it's actually, it changes every day. It's the the Bing 
um, image of the day. And, oh, but those are beautiful and those landscapes. Are really good, and and not always landscapes. There's some like kind of interesting. There's some like human interest stuff in there. There's some some nature. There's some landscapes. There's some uh, animal stuff. Like it, it genuinely. Like, <laughs> I promise I'm not a Microsoft shill. Genuinely, the Bing uh, wallpapers are some of the most consistently interesting, at least on a daily basis, source of photography that I look at. For like, for real, it's actually genuinely really fantastic work. Whoever's curating that, thumbs up. Like, they do a fantastic. job. I actually so, used to know the guy yeah. who curated that. You didn't all right. Well, they, he he they might not have job. that job anymore because yeah. he job hops like crazy. But um, at well, one point in time, he curated. But yeah. for real, like yeah. they're genuinely great photos, and there has there's stuff that I see there all on there all the time of places where I'm like, boy, do I want to go there, or oh, I want to take a photo that looks like that, or it gives there's a lot it's of inspiration, a lot of inspiration, and that and it's cool. It's a new one every day. You you never know what's going to pop up, and it can be something that's really inspirational. So, um, I use I guess I use my wallpaper as a source of inspiration, at least on my computer. There you go. So no, I don't use my own work on that but for a reason <laughs> i almost exclusively use my own work on that but uh it's also very utilitarian but you know what yeah. it's your wallpaper do what you want milo thanks for the question so oh we yeah one we, more. we have one more i, I didn't see that one, one thank have. you there <laughs> i was i was just about to wrap it up okay yeah, this question uh comes from sarah um canon users uh that would be me hello uh looking to upgrade i have a 5ds which i don't love <gasps> I'm deeply offended, Sarah. Mm. I'm deeply offended. How dare okay, you? but let's continue. <laughs> um, I think it's crap in low light and being in the dreary Pacific Northwest, that is quite often. I'm looking at either the R5 or R6. The R5 has higher resolution for blowing up distance and action shots. The R6 has a much higher ISO performance. I want to get the R5, but I'm worried that I will not like it just like my 5DS. Okay, uh, this falls back to this thing that I like to say a lot. Do you want a smart car or a pickup truck? Yeah. Some people want smart cars. Some people want pickup trucks. The right tool for the right job, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? So uh, everything's everything looks like a nail when all you have is a hammer, but you know sometimes you need a screwdriver. So yeah. there's or... the 5DS. You think it's crap in low light? That's because it is... <laughs> Yeah, but that's not what it's for. It's, that's not what it's for. The 5DS is beautiful in detail, and especially was it the SR, which has that Moray filter mm -hmm. removed? That is extra crap at high ISOs, mm -hmm. but guess what? Oh, does it look amazing when you are doing product shots in a studio? For so, sure. uh, yeah, you have a beautiful, fantastic camera that I was so incredibly happy when I was able to get it on discount when it got discontinued because it was a four or five thousand dollar camera that i picked up for one thousand mm -hmm. bucks uh which is a hell of a deal i was so happy about that it is a phenomenal camera you are using it incorrectly um if you're sh wanting to shoot sports <laughs> no it real bad it shoots like three frames a second because the mm -hmm. files are so damn big yeah um i've got no. a suggestion buy a sony alpha one and have it both ways yeah there you and go spend sixty five hundred dollars for the body only <laughs> Oof, rough rough uh no actually if you wanted to go uh sony and get like a converter so you can use all your canon lenses that's definitely a way to go uh i have absolutely no preference over the r5 or r6 just know that the 5ds is a beautiful wonderful camera you are what is that thing of just like um uh, a fish will always be uh, judged harshly in its inability to climb a tree or something like that. I'm just like Sounds you're right. you're using you're using it for the wrong stuff. It's a beautiful yeah. camera, but it is meant to be used in controlled environments with lots of lighting at, yeah. and get that detail. And, and I would say, like, if it's already a struggle, if you're if you're consistently shooting stuff that that camera is not good for, and you're you're struggling with that camera, then don't buy a newer version of that camera that does the same stuff. Indeed. Like, Indeed. Yeah. So if you're already worried about it, maybe don't buy that camera. And you don't need megapixels. It. Yeah. Uh, go back to one of our very first episodes. How many megapixels do you need? Not many. The answer is not many. Not many. All right. So that actually wraps up all of our listener questions. Woo. That was a long one. Good catching up. Good catching up. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. Uh, plus a bonus spicy story for all of you guys. Uh, normally I only tell that story when I'm drunk, <laughs> but, uh, no, here we are. It's public knowledge. This podcast now. is not You're... recorded under the, inf under the influence. <laughs> uh, no, it's not. Although that was an idea that I had a few years ago. Oh, 
Maybe it will be someday. Maybe maybe it will be. Anyway, um, <laughs> no, thank you so much uh, for listening. We have another beautiful episode coming to you next week, and then we're going to do a fabulous episode 100. So send in uh, your thoughts about what we should do for a kind of special milestone episode. And send those in at the email address, hello at photo-op.show. If you have questions or ideas for future episodes, you can email us at hello at photo op Dot show. Watch us on Ben's YouTube channel at Nom Creative. As in Om Nom Nom. Share this with a friend and you can listen to Photo Op anywhere podcasts are sold. Or downloaded. Because it's free.